Part two of our Get Started with EF Core online course, we'll look at creating an entity for a DB context. Hit the subscribe button and stay tuned as we'll also look at EF Core migrations. Before we start, we want to set up some new projects within our solution. So we right click on the solution, go to add a new project. Do a search for class library and we're going to click on next. The first project we're set up is called round the code efcore.application. Select the framework as .NET 8 and create the project. We're now going to do the same for the next class library. So we select class library. This one's going to be called round the code .domain. Again, we select it as .NET 8 and create the project. Now, before we get going, we want to add some dependencies. So we go to the round the code .infrastructure project, right click on dependencies and go to add project reference. For this one, we want to select application. And if we right click on the dependencies for efcore.application project, we want to select the efcore.domain project as a dependency. In both of the projects that we've just created, we want to delete the default classes that it created for us, as we're not going to need them for this. Next, we're going to set up an entity for our product. We we'll right click on domain, go to add a new folder. We're going to call the folder entities. And within that, we're going to right click on it, go to new item and create a class called product. We're going to mark it as public, remove the using statements, and we're going to set up some properties. The first one we're going to set up is ID. Following that, we're going to set up a property for the name. We're also going to do the same for the description as well. And finally, we're going to set up a property for the price of the product. The add DB context extension method in the service collection allows us to add a DB context to the IOC container. If you're familiar with dependency injection, you also know that you can add a service and an implementation. And that's what we're going to do next. Before we do that, though, we need to go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. We need to click on the Install tab, and we've got this EF Core. We also need to add it to the application project. Next, we want to create an interface for our DB context. We right click on the application project, go to add a new folder. Call the folder context and then we right click on that again, go to add new item. And this is where we'll create our interface. We're going to call it I round the code EF core DB context. We'll mark it as public and remove the using statements. First of all, we want to bring in our DB set for our product entity that we just created. So we're going to set a type of DB set and it's called product. We need to bring that the assembly in for that and we're going to name it products with a getter and a setter. Next, we're checking the database connection when the application starts. So we need to bring that in. It's a type of database fascade and it's called database and it's read only. So we just add the getter. Later on, we're going to be saving changes to our DB context. So we want to bring that implementation in. So it's a type of task int and it's called save changes async. We pass in an optional cancellation token. We now want to set that interface to our DB context. So in the round the code EF core DB context, we implement the I round the code EF core DB context. Now you can see we're getting an error here. And the reason being is that we've not implemented the products DB set. So we need to go ahead and do that. Mark it as public and the error disappears. Let's make some changes in the program.cs file now. So for the add DB context, we want to add that implementation in as a service. So we're going to add that in. And we need to bring in the assembly for it. And we also want to make the change when we're checking the connection to the database. Let's see if our application is still running. Our application is running, so that's all set up for us. We've added the DB set of our product entity to our DB context. However, we've not added it to SQL Server. If we tried to run a query against this DB set, it would throw an exception. We need to add it to SQL Server. 
In order to do that, we need to add an additional NuGet package. So we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. Click on the Browse tab, and we search for Microsoft Entity Framework Core.Design. We select it, and we're going to install it on the roundthecode.ef core project, which is our web API. Let's go ahead and install that. We can now create migrations in our project. In order to do that, we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Package Manager Console. We need to select the default project as roundthecode.efcore.infrastructure, and we can run add-migration, and then we're going to call the migration add product. This has created a migrations folder. This is our migration, and this is a snapshot of the DB context. If we look at the add migration script, we can see it's creating a new table, and within that, it's creating a name and a description property. Now, interestingly, it's setting it as nfar char with a maximum amount. Now, this is not a very good idea, particularly further down the line if we're running SQL queries. We need to restrict the length of the nfar char. So we're going to remove the migration and make some changes. So we call remove hyphen migration. And that removes the migrations for us. To set the length of our properties in our entity, we're going to right click on EF Core Infrastructure and we're going to set up some entity type configurations. We're going to call the folder configurations. And within that, we're going to create a new class, which we're going to call product configuration. Mark it as public and remove the using statements that we don't need. Now we're going to implement the I entity type configuration, passing in our entity as the generic type. We need to import the assembly for that. And this requires a method of configure to be implemented. We're going to use the builder parameter to set up our settings. First of all, we're going to set the table name. So we call builder.toTable. For this, we can set a name and we can also set a schema. The name we're going to call product. We're also going to set a schema and we're going to call that shop. To set the length of the name, we're going to Call builder, call the property, and then we're going to set the has max length extension method to 200 characters. We're also going to ensure that it's required. We're going to do the same for description, set the property as description. We're going to increase the max length to 1000 characters, and we'll remove the is required statement as it's optional. In order for our configurations to get picked up by the migrations, we need to make a change to our DB context. First of all, we're going to import the system.reflection namespace, and then we're going to override a method within the DB context. So we call protected override, and the method in question is on model creating. We're passing in a model builder parameter, and we're going to use that, and we're going to call apply configurations from assembly. Within that, we need to pass in the assembly, so we call assembly.getExecutingAssembly. With configuration set up in our DB context, we can now run the migration. Once again, we go to Tools, New Get Package Manager, and Package Manager Console. We're going to call add hyphen migration, and we're going to call it add product. We need to ensure that the default project is still set to run the code.efcore.infrastructure. This has created our migration script. We can see the schema for the table has been set to shop. And with the name and description, it now has maximum length set to them. Now this has added the migration script, but it hasn't updated it to the database. To do that in the package manager console, we just call update hyphen database. This has now created the table in our database. To show you, we go to view SQL Server Object Explorer. We go to our local DB server. In databases, we go to round the code EF core. And if we do a refresh, we can see that the shop.product table has been created. If we have a look at the columns, we can see that our max lengths have been added. It's also created this EF migrations history table. Let's view the data for that. It's got one record in there, and it's the add product. So this corresponds to the migration script that we created. So that ensures that the migration has been run and it won't run again against this database. Watch the next part to continue learning about Entity Framework Core. And if you want to watch any video in our Get Started with EF Core course, check out the playlist at roundthecode.com slash EF course. There is also a link for it in the YouTube video description.